So the very interesting fight to remove Georgia DA Fonnie Willis as the acting prosecutor in the state RICO case against Donald Trump keeps getting stranger and stranger. Joining me now to talk about it is Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett. Well, now we are hearing that Fonnie Willis and her very highly paid or very well-paid uh, lover, assistant, and various other things were apparently getting it on before he was hired, uh, contrary to what they said under oath. Uh, is that enough to remove them from this case? Oh, I think absolutely it is. And, you know, David, like the picture of Dorian Gray, Willis is self-destructing before our very eyes. Yeah. Her own misbehavior has ruined her credibility. And, you know, her case against Trump is disintegrating. Her testimony, together with her lover, Nathan Wade, and his ex-partner, Terrence Bradley, I mean, that was a Three Stooges slapstick <laughs> comedy but Bradley's testimony this week may have been the nail in the coffin. He once texted that Willis and Wade were absolutely having an affair before Wade was hire, hired, which puts a lie to their sworn statements earlier. So based on the code of ethics, I think the judge really has no choice here. He should disqualify both Wade and Willis. And then the question is, well, where does the case go from there right, uh, if right. it's so tainted? Uh, other prosecutors may decide we're not going to we're going to dismiss the charges. And and the the real question, Larry's been saying this over and over again. He doesn't care who or when he, any one of these people was sleeping with each other. The main question is what what was what were they doing with the White House? For example, all these trips that yeah. that uh, Nathan Wade took down to the White House that he was paid for, by the way, through I guess through uh, the taxpayers of Georgia. Uh, I mean, what was that about? And if there was. If they were being instructed by somebody in the White House as to how to carry things up, because Nathan Wade doesn't really know that much about this, particularly a RICO case, which is very hard to prosecute, if they were being instructed, wouldn't that be election interference? Oh, arguably it could be. And, you know, we haven't received any answers uh, to why he billed two White House visits eight hours apiece. Who was he meeting with? What were they talking about? I mean, since he's billing for the RICO case, it has to be RICO-related, right? Yeah. So, you know, Fonnie Willis had always insisted, oh, no, there's no coordination with the Biden campaign or the White House. Well, look at the billing records. Right. It seems to implicate that. Right. Well, and, there are know, other things, by the way. Trouble. There she's, are other things to look yeah. at. And, and Breitbart, uh, we haven't gone into it on our own, so we don't know how sure it is. But apparently there was a former yeah. uh, Biden aide who paid the assistant a DA down there, about $130,000 to help out in some political matters. So there, there were communications between the DA's office in Fulton County and the White House. I, quickly, I want to move to the Supremes taking up Trump's immunity case. Uh, does he have a shot for that with the Supremes? Oh, he absolutely does. I mean, his argument is that I was acting consistent with my duties to uphold the law. And if I had evidence of uh, election impropriety, uh, faulty ballot counting, you know, I ha it's incumbent on my duty to look into it, to make challenges, to beg yeah. for recounts, to file legal challenges. All of that should be protected by immunity. But I think the decision to take the case, David, puts both federal trials brought by special counsel Jack Smith on hold. And I think it likely means those trials will not happen before the presidential election. Well, none of these will. Their, their entire strategy, and it has been coordinated, let's be honest about it, if, if not in, in, in written or spoken word, at least with a nod and a handshake, uh, their whole strategy to prevent Donald Trump from getting into the White House to, to put him in jail before, to get a conviction before the election has failed. I mean, all these cases in one way or another are just, just falling away. I, I don't think they'll get any kind of conviction very quickly. I don't think they'll get any conviction before the election. Do you? Well, the only case that may actually go to trial is the Alvin Bragg uh, New York case. Uh, but. I, I think Jonathan Turley's take on that is correct. Uh, the professor from George Washington yeah. University he said that case is so weak, right. it may backfire and actually help already Donald has. Trump. Yeah, and it I, already has. I, I think he's right about that. Yeah. Yep. All right, Greg, I'm sorry we had to cut it short, but we had all that breaking news with Donald Trump himself. Thank you for being here. Good to see you, Greg.